Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. I love the straightforwardness and the simplicity that, that he uses to teach. His teachings are very simple for everybody to understand. If it hadn't been for this ministry, I don't know where I would be. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. This week, I'm making a very special set of programs. Many of you may not know, but this is the 48th anniversary of the Supreme Court decision that legalized abortion. And since that time, there's been well over 60 million children in the United States aborted. If you look at it worldwide, I just read a statistic not very long ago, a few months ago, that abortion is now the leading cause of death in the world. In New York, there are more black babies aborted per year than there are blacks that are born. It's a terrible, terrible tragedy, but I believe it's coming to an end. And on the other days, today I'm going to minister some things straight from Scripture, but on the rest of this week's programs, I'm going to be having on Janet Porter, who is one of the leading uh, people fighting to stop abortion. She's the one who authored a lot of the heartbeat bills, fought for it in Ohio. She has spoken in front of the U.S. Congress, and I tell you, this woman is a force to be reckoned with. You are going to be really blessed by this interview. But I just wanted to share with you today what the Scripture has to say about this. You know, I've actually had people say, but abortion isn't even mentioned in the Bible. Well, of course, the word abortion is relatively a modern word. The practice is mentioned in the Bible. You know, when Moses was born, Pharaoh had all of the Hebrew midwives cast the children out if they were a male and kill them. That's, that's abortion. It was killing. Uh, the same thing happened when Jesus was born. Of course, these were after they were born, but it was killing the infants there in Bethlehem. And every time that there is something really significant that happens in the history of the world, such as Moses and the giving of the law, such as Jesus, the Messiah, being born, you have seen this attack on infants, on children. And I believe that what we're experiencing now, it's a demonic thing. And there, you know, like I said, there's been well over 60 million children aborted. The reason I say it's over 60 million is because that's how many we've counted. But New York and California aren't even required to report all abortions. And so there is many, many more than that. And if you take into account all of the medical things that, you know, the morning after pill that uh, basically performs an abortion and stuff, it's just a terrible tragedy. I mean, every year I heard Janet say that I think there's something like 22,000. Well, that's, it's more than that. It'd have to be more than that. Anyway, there's tens of thousands of children that are aborted uh, every year, thousands every single day. And man, we've just got to deal with this. So I want to share some things with you from Scripture. Most of what I'll be doing with Janet this week is an interview about what she's been doing politically and how God has opened up doors. And I tell you, it's amazing how God used Janet Porter uh, in this area of fighting against abortion. But I want to share some things with you. I want to start here in Psalms chapter 139. And in verse 14, it says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all thy members were written, when in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. You know, let me read this to you in the NIV, uh, because it's real wordy in the King James, but let me read this to you in the NIV translation. It says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Man, that is amazing. You know what this is saying is that a child in the womb 
GOD HAD ALREADY WRITTEN IN HIS BOOK ALL OF OUR DAYS. DID YOU KNOW GOD HAS A PLAN FOR YOU? YOU DIDN'T JUST HAPPEN. YOU AREN'T JUST A COMBINATION OF A SPERM AND AN EGG THAT JUST RANDOMLY HAPPENED AND IT'S SOMETHING THAT JUST HAPPENS NATURALLY. IT SAYS THAT YOU WERE WROUGHT IN GOD. OVER IN JEREMIAH CHAPTER 1, SOME OF THE VERSES THAT THE LORD USED WHEN HE CALLED ME INTO THE MINISTRY, HE SAYS, BEFORE I FORMED YOU IN YOUR MOTHER'S BELLY, BEFORE YOU CAME FORTH OUT OF THE WOMB, I SANCTIFIED YOU AND I ORDAINED YOU TO BE A PROPHET UNTO THE NATIONS. GOD DID THAT FOR JEREMIAH. HE SPOKE THOSE SAME THINGS TO ME. GOD HAD A PURPOSE FOR MY LIFE, FOR JEREMIAH'S LIFE, AND FOR YOUR LIFE BEFORE YOU EVER CAME FORTH OUT OF THE WOMB. AND THIS IS NOT RANDOM. IT SAYS THE SAME THING OVER IN GALATIANS CHAPTER 1. THE APOSTLE PAUL SAID, WHEN IT PLEASED GOD WHO SEPARATED ME UNTO THE GOSPEL FROM MY MOTHER'S WOMB. SO THERE AGAIN IS ANOTHER WITNESS. WHEN YOU WERE FORMED, THE MOMENT OF CONCEPTION, YOU BECAME A PERSON. AND AS YOU'RE GOING TO HEAR FROM JANET THIS WEEK, SHE'S THE ONE THAT HAS SPONSORED, uh, CO-SPONSORED ALL OF THESE HEARTBEAT BILLS. AND YOU KNOW, ONE OF THE WAYS THAT YOU TELL IF A PERSON IS ALIVE, IF THEY HAVE A WRECK OR IF THEY PASS OUT OR SOMETHING LIKE THAT, AND IF YOU WANT TO SEE, ARE THEY STILL ALIVE, ONE OF THE THINGS YOU DO IS TO CHECK AND SEE IF THERE'S A HEARTBEAT. IF THEY HAVE A HEARTBEAT, THEY'RE ALIVE. WELL, THAT SAME THING NOT ONLY APPLIES AT THE END OF LIFE, IT APPLIES AT THE BEGINNING OF LIFE. AND ONCE YOU DETECT A HEARTBEAT, ACTUALLY THE SCRIPTURES TEACH THAT FROM THE MOMENT OF CONCEPTION, YOU ARE A UNIQUE INDIVIDUAL, BUT FOR CERTAIN, FROM THE MOMENT YOU CAN DETECT A HEARTBEAT, WHICH IS JUST A FEW WEEKS AFTER CONCEPTION, THAT IS A LIFE. AND THEREFORE, THE COMMAND, ONE OF THE TEN COMMANDMENTS OUT OF EXODUS CHAPTER 20, THOU SHALL NOT KILL. IF YOU PUT IT TOGETHER WITH WHAT JESUS SAID IN THE NEW TESTAMENT, IT SAYS THOU SHALT NOT MURDER. THAT'S ONE OF THE TEN COMMANDMENTS. AND ONCE YOU DETECT A BEATING HEART, THAT IS A LIVE PERSON. THEY HAVE THEIR OWN DNA. THEY HAVE MANY TIMES A DIFFERENT TYPE OF uh, uh, BLOOD TYPE, AND EVERYTHING IS DIFFERENT. THAT IS A SEPARATE HUMAN BEING. AND AS JANET SAID, I READ IN HER BOOK, ONE OF THE THINGS SHE SAID THAT IS SO POWERFUL IS SHE WAS TALKING TO A WOMAN THAT WAS PREGNANT, AND SHE SAYS, I'M DEBATING ON WHETHER TO HAVE A BABY. AND SHE SAYS, NO, YOU'VE ALREADY GOT A BABY. WHAT YOU'RE DEBATING ON IS WHETHER TO KILL THAT BABY OR TO GIVE THAT BABY LIFE. MAN, THAT'S A LITTLE BIT IN YOUR FACE, BUT THAT IS 100% ACCURATE. FROM THE MOMENT OF CONCEPTION, YOU HAVE ANOTHER PERSON LIVING ON THE INSIDE OF YOU, AND IT'S NOT A DEBATE ABOUT WHETHER YOU WILL HAVE A BABY OR NOT. YOU'VE GOT A BABY. THE DEBATE IS ABOUT ARE YOU GOING TO KILL THAT BABY OR ARE YOU GOING TO GIVE THAT BABY LIFE? AND SO RIGHT HERE, IT SHOWS YOU THAT GOD HAS A PURPOSE. HE'S ALREADY WRITTEN IN HIS BOOK ALL OF THE THINGS CONCERNING YOUR DAYS. NOW, HE DOESN'T FORCE YOU TO FOLLOW HIS PLAN. GOD HAS GIVEN US A FREE WILL, AND YOU CAN JUST LOOK AT... YOU CAN LOOK IN ANY DIRECTION. MOST OF YOU CAN LOOK RIGHT AT YOUR OWN LIFE AND TELL THAT GOD DOESN'T FORCE YOU TO FOLLOW HIS WAY. MANY OF US HAVE MADE WRONG CHOICES THAT HAS LED US DOWN PATHS THAT GOD NEVER INTENDED US TO GO DOWN. AND SO IN YOUR OWN LIFE, YOU DON'T HAVE TO LOOK ANY FURTHER THAN YOUR OWN LIFE TO SEE THAT YOU'VE GOT A FREE CHOICE. BUT ALTHOUGH GOD DOESN'T FORCE YOU TO FOLLOW HIS CHOICE FOR YOUR LIFE, HE HAD A PLAN FOR YOUR LIFE WRITTEN OUT WHEN YOU WERE STILL IN YOUR MOTHER'S WOMB. HE DIDN'T WRITE A PLAN JUST FOR A FETUS, A HUNK OF FLESH. IT'S A PERSON. IT IS A PERSON LIVING INSIDE OF A WOMAN WHEN SHE GETS PREGNANT. AND WE DO NOT HAVE THE RIGHT TO CHOOSE TO KILL THAT CHILD. AND SOME WOMEN WILL SAY, BUT WHAT ABOUT MY RIGHTS? IT'S INCONVENIENT. IT'S ALL OF THESE THINGS. I'M NOT SAYING THAT THERE AREN'T HARDSHIPS ASSOCIATED WITH IT. IF YOU HAVE A CHILD OUTSIDE OF MARRIAGE, I CAN GUARANTEE YOU THERE'S GOING TO BE PROBLEMS ASSOCIATED WITH THAT. EVEN SOMETIMES INSIDE OF MARRIAGE, IT MAY BE A FINANCIAL uh, DRAIN. It may, IT MAY PUT A BURDEN ON YOU. BUT IS THE ANSWER MURDER? IT REALLY JUST COMES DOWN TO YOU. DO YOU BELIEVE WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS, THAT WHEN YOU WERE FORMED IN YOUR MOTHER'S WOMB, THAT GOD IS THE ONE WHO KNIT THESE PARTS TOGETHER, THAT HE ALREADY HAD WRITTEN IN HIS BOOK WHAT THAT LIFE WAS SUPPOSED TO DO AND WHAT HE WANTED TO ACCOMPLISH THROUGH THAT LIFE? IF THESE THINGS ARE TRUE, IF THE WORD OF GOD IS TRUE, THEN IT DOESN'T MATTER WHAT YOUR HARDSHIP IS. YOU DO NOT HAVE THE RIGHT TO KILL THAT CHILD THAT'S ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. THAT'S WHAT IT COMES DOWN TO. 
Did you know the Roe versus Wade decision that on this coming Friday will be the 48th anniversary of that Supreme Court decision? And did you know in that decision, if you were to read the whole thing, it says in there that they do not know when life begins. Now, that's really a no-brainer. If you read the Bible, you would know. I'm going to share some other verses with you that'll make it very clear about John the Baptist being filled with the Holy Spirit and leaping for joy in his mother's womb. And if you read the Bible, the Bible makes it clear. But of course, the secular courts didn't read the Bible. They didn't know what the Word said. And science had never had to come up with when does life start because it's been accepted for thousands of years that when you get pregnant, that is a live person on the inside of you in a baby form, but it's still a person. It had never been challenged. You have to be educated. You have to be modern to become as dumb as what some people have come, become today. And so when Roe versus Wade decision was written, they actually wrote in there, we don't know when life begins because nobody had been challenged in this area. And they said that if you could prove that a child in the womb is a human being, then Roe versus Wade, of course, is vul null and void and of no effect because if they are a living human being, they are entitled to all of the constitutional rights that any other living human being is uh, uh, entitled to. So that was written in the Roe versus Wade decision. Now science over the last 48 years has proven beyond any doubt that that child is a human being with sonograms and stuff. They actually had a testimony in front of the U.S. Congress where they put a sonogram up there and the, and the doctor was showing this is the heart and you could see it beating. Science now has proven that that child inside of the mother's womb is a human being. And there are cases that are making their way up to the Supreme Court. And now that we have some godly uh, constitutionalist on the Supreme Court that were appointed by President Trump, I believe that as these cases make their way to the Supreme Court, that we have a very good chance of seeing Roe versus Wade overturned because of science, not because of religion, although I'm, I'm fine with doing it because of what the Word says, but even science now shows that that child is a living human being. All of their days were already written out before any of them existed. At the moment of conception, that is a person inside of that woman. And it doesn't matter. You know, I've had some people say, well, what about rape or incest? Well, I agree. It's a terrible thing for the woman who was raped or had incest, but that baby didn't do anything. There's no reason to murder the baby because of the hardship that that would put on the mother. There are things in place, man. There are people, there are more people wanting a, uh, adoption than there are children to adopt. And so we don't have the right to kill a child just because it's inconvenient. Some people say, well, what about if they have a birth defect, like a Down syndrome or something like that? You know, we've got one of the testimonies on our website. You can go see about the Trover healing journey. And uh, the Trovers out of, I forget the exact number, but it was like 20 or 21 markers for down syndrome, the sonogram showed that their child had 20 or 20, uh, all but one of those markers. They said they guaranteed it was a Down syndrome child and they tried to get her to abort. She decided to keep the child, brought it to full term. Of course, they prayed and believed God and that child was born perfectly healthy. Those tests aren't 100% accurate. And even if a child has Down syndrome, does that mean that their life is less important? That they're less alive than a church person that doesn't have Down syndrome? Again, this is eugenics. This is where you choose who can live and who can't live. Just because there's some kind of a birth defect or some kind of a problem does not give you the right to murder a person. And that's what it all comes down to. It is murder. It is not a woman's choice. It's not a choice about your own body. That is a separate human being inside of your body that you do not have the right to kill that child. And I know that there may be people watching this who are offended at that and saying, well, I've never heard anybody say it exactly that way. I, I challenge you to go to the Word of God and to disprove it. You can't disprove it.
THERE'S MANY EXAMPLES OF PEOPLE KILLING CHILDREN IN THE BIBLE, AND THE SCRIPTURE TALKS ABOUT SHEDDING INNOCENT BLOOD. THAT'S WHAT IT'S TALKING ABOUT, IS ABOUT ABORTION AND STUFF, AND IT IS NOT CONDONED IN SCRIPTURE. LET ME GIVE YOU THIS EXAMPLE, THAT AFTER THE ANGEL APPEARED UNTO MARY AND TOLD HER THAT SHE WAS GOING TO HAVE A CHILD, AND IT WOULD BE A VIRGIN BIRTH, THAT SHE WOULDN'T CONCEIVE THROUGH A UNION WITH A MAN, BUT THE WORD OF GOD WOULD LITERALLY BE IMPLANTED IN HER BY THE POWER OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. MAN, I'VE GOT A GREAT TEACHING ON THAT, ABOUT HOW TO CONCEIVE A MIRACLE. MARY CONCEIVED JESUS BY OPENING HER HEART AND THE WORD OF GOD CAME IN. AND THIS IS THE REASON THAT JOHN CHAPTER 1 SAYS THE WORD BECAME FLESH AND DWELT AMONG US. BECAUSE JESUS WAS LITERALLY THE PROPHECIES ABOUT THE MESSIAH IN THE OLD TESTAMENT TAKEN BY THE HOLY SPIRIT AND IMPREGNATED HER. AND THAT VIRGIN BIRTH WAS NATURAL, NORMAL IN EVERY RESPECT EXCEPT THAT A MAN DIDN'T PROVIDE THE SEED GOD'S WORD WAS THE SEED. IT SAYS IN uh, 1 PETER chapter 1, VERSE 23, IT SAYS, BEING BORN AGAIN, NOT OF CORRUPTIBLE SEED, BUT OF INCORRUPTIBLE BY THE WORD OF GOD THAT LIVES AND ABIDES FOREVER. AND IF YOU LOOK THAT WORD SEED UP IN THE GREEK, IT'S THE WORD SPORA. THAT'S WHERE WE GET THE WORD SPORE FROM, WHERE A FLOWER POLLINATES BY THE SPORES THAT ARE EXCHANGED BETWEEN THOSE FLOWERS. AND SPORA IS A DERIVATIVE OF THE GREEK WORD SPERMA, WHERE WE GET THE WORD SPERM FROM. IN OTHER WORDS, THE WORD OF GOD IS A SPERM. AND THE ANGEL ANNOUNCED TO MARY, IN A SENSE, MADE A PROPOSAL TO HER. THE LORD DIDN'T FORCE THIS UPON HER. SHE HUMBLED HERSELF AND SAID, I RECEIVE IT. BE IT UNTO ME ACCORDING TO THY WORD. SHE RECEIVED THE WORD. THE HOLY SPIRIT TOOK ALL OF THESE SEEDS, THE PROPHECIES ABOUT THE MESSIAH, AND LITERALLY IMPLANTED THEM IN MARY'S WOMB, AND THAT'S HOW JESUS WAS CONCEIVED. AND WHEN THE ANGEL APPEARED UNTO HER AS A CONFIRMATION, HE SAID, THIS IS ALSO THE SIXTH MONTH WITH HER THAT WAS CALLED BARREN, AND THAT WAS TALKING ABOUT ELIZABETH, MARY'S uh, COUSIN. AND ELIZABETH WAS PAST CHILDBEARING AGE. AND SO THIS WAS A MIRACULOUS BIRTH. IF SHE COULD GET PREGNANT AFTER SHE HAD ALREADY BEEN THROUGH MENOPAUSE AND IT WAS IMPOSSIBLE FOR HER TO HAVE CHILDREN, AND IF SHE WAS PREGNANT, WHAT A CONFIRMATION TO MARY THAT WOULD BE THAT THIS VIRGIN BIRTH COULD ALSO TAKE PLACE. SO IMMEDIATELY AFTER MARY RECEIVED THESE uh, WORDS FROM THE ANGEL GABRIEL, THIS IS uh, LUKE CHAPTER 1, AND IN VERSE 39, IT SAYS, AND MARY AROSE IN THOSE DAYS AND WENT INTO THE HILL COUNTRY WITH HASTE INTO A CITY OF JUDAH AND ENTERED INTO THE HOUSE OF ZACHARIAS AND SALUTED ELIZABETH. AND IT CAME TO PASS THAT WHEN ELIZABETH HEARD THE SALUTATION OF MARY, THE BABE LEAPED IN HER WOMB, AND ELIZABETH WAS FILLED WITH THE HOLY GHOST. AND SHE SPAKE OUT WITH A LOUD VOICE AND SAID, BLESSED ART THOU AMONG WOMEN, AND BLESSED IS THE FRUIT OF THY WOMB. AND WHENCE IS THIS TO ME, THAT THE MOTHER OF MY LORD SHOULD COME TO ME? FOR LO, AS SOON AS THE VOICE OF THY SALUTATION SOUNDED IN MINE EARS, THE BABE LEAPED IN MY WOMB FOR JOY. NOW THE SCRIPTURE SAYS THIS WAS THE SIXTH MONTH OF ELIZABETH'S PREGNANCY. SO IF THIS WAS A NORMAL PREGNANCY, THREE MONTHS BEFORE JOHN THE BAPTIST WAS BORN, HE HEARD MARY'S GREETING AND HE LEAPT IN ELIZABETH'S WOMB FOR JOY. THIS WAS NOT JUST A HUNK OF FLESH. THIS WAS NOT JUST TISSUE. THIS WAS A PERSON THAT LITERALLY EXPERIENCED JOY AT HEARING THE VOICE OF MARY. A FETUS DOESN'T HAVE JOY. YOU KNOW, THE WORD FETUS, IF YOU LOOK IT UP IN THE GREEK, IT'S JUST TALKING ABOUT AN UNBORN BABY, BUT IT IS A BABY. IN EVERY RESPECT, IT'S REFERRING TO A BABY. BUT THE WOMEN'S LIB, THE LIBERALS, HAVE TAKEN THAT WORD TO SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER DEHUMANIZE THIS CHILD AND MAKE IT LIKE IT'S NOT A REAL PERSON, IT'S JUST A FETUS. WELL, FIRST OF ALL, THEY DON'T EVEN KNOW WHAT THE WORD MEANS WHEN THEY USE IT, BUT IT IS A REAL HUMAN BEING THAT HAS JOY. AND IT SAYS THAT JOHN THE BAPTIST WOULD BE FILLED WITH THE HOLY SPIRIT FROM HIS MOTHER'S WOMB. THAT WAS THE PROPHECY EARLIER IN LUKE CHAPTER 1 WHEN ZACHARIAS uh, SAW THE ANGEL AND HAD THIS PROPHECY, AND HE SAID HE WOULD BE FILLED WITH THE HOLY SPIRIT FROM HIS MOTHER'S WOMB. THIS IS WHEN JOHN THE BAPTIST WAS FILLED WITH THE HOLY SPIRIT THREE MONTHS BEFORE HE WAS BORN. SIX MONTHS INTO THE PREGNANCY, 
JOHN THE BAPTIST WAS FILLED WITH THE HOLY SPIRIT. NOW JUST FOLLOW THIS THROUGH. DID THE HOLY SPIRIT FILL A HUNK OF FLESH THAT WASN'T EVEN HUMAN, THAT WAS JUST LIKE A GROWTH OR SOMETHING INSIDE OF uh, ELIZABETH'S BODY? ABSOLUTELY NOT. HE LEAPT FOR JOY, WHICH MEANS THAT HE HAD EMOTIONS. YOU KNOW, THEY'VE ACTUALLY GOT SONOGRAMS AND THEY'VE SHOWN THIS DURING ABORTIONS, THE CHILD PULLING AWAY FROM THE uh, SUCTION OR THE PROBES THAT ARE TRYING TO DISMEMBER THIS CHILD. MATTER OF FACT, IF ANY OF YOU SAW THE MOVIE UNPLANNED, WE HAD ABBY JOHNSON ON OUR TRUTH AND LIBERTY BROADCAST, AND SHE SAID THAT THIS IS ONE OF THE THINGS THAT PUSHED HER OVER THE EDGE IS WHEN SHE ACTUALLY WATCHED AN ABORTION AND SAW THAT CHILD PULLING BACK AND EXPERIENCING PAIN. WHEN THEY ABORT A BABY, THAT BABY FEELS IT. IT'S A PERSON THAT IS BEING MURDERED AND TORN APART AND BODY PARTS SOLD FOR MONEY. PLANNED PARENTHOOD AND THE ABORTION INDUSTRY, I GUARANTEE YOU, THE LOVE OF MONEY IS THE ROOT OF ALL EVIL. THEY ARE IN THIS FOR THE MONEY THAT THEY ARE MAKING. IT'S NOT ABOUT HELPING WOMEN. THEY COUCH THIS THING IN THESE TERMS THAT, YOU KNOW, WE'RE HERE FOR REPRODUCTIVE RIGHTS. MAN, IF YOU WANT TO, YOU KNOW, EXERCISE YOUR REPRODUCTIVE RIGHTS, DON'T HAVE SEX. DON'T GET PREGNANT IF YOU DON'T WANT TO HAVE THAT CHILD. YOU DON'T HAVE THE RIGHT TO TAKE ANOTHER PERSON'S LIFE. THE SCRIPTURE TEACHES THAT THIS IS A HUMAN BEING. PSALMS 139, ALL OF THOSE DAYS OF THAT CHILD ARE WRITTEN OUT THE MOMENT IT STARTS BEING FORMED IN THE MOTHER'S BELLY. AND GOD HAS ALREADY PLANNED OUT A PLAN FOR THAT LIFE. JUST THINK WHAT HAS BEEN MISSED. YOU KNOW, I, AGAIN, I'M... I JUST MINISTER FROM THE WORD. I'M NOT AS VERSED IN THINGS OUTSIDE OF THE BIBLE AS WHAT A LOT OF OTHER PEOPLE ARE, BUT I'VE HEARD PEOPLE SAY THAT IT WAS EITHER MOZART OR ONE OF THESE GREAT COMPOSERS THAT IF ABORTION WOULD HAVE BEEN ALLOWED IN THOSE DAYS, THEY WOULD HAVE BEEN ABORTED. AND uh, MANY OF THEM HAD PHYSICAL PROBLEMS, AND YET THINK WHAT THE WORLD WOULD HAVE BEEN LIKE IF IT HADN'T HAD SOME OF THESE COMPOSERS. THINK WHAT THE WORLD HAS MISSED WITH OVER 60 MILLION BABIES IN JUST THE UNITED STATES. WORLDWIDE, IT'S, WHO KNOWS, A BILLION CHILDREN. THINK OF WHAT GOD HAD WRITTEN OUT. THINK OF WHAT CONTRIBUTIONS THEY COULD HAVE MADE TO THIS WORLD. AND YET PEOPLE ARE KILLING THAT. I'M TELLING YOU, WE DON'T NEED TO FORGET THIS BATTLE. WE ARE IN A BATTLE, AND I AGREE WITH JANET PORTER. YOU'RE GOING TO HEAR HER THE REST OF THIS WEEK, AND YOU'RE GOING TO LEARN SOME THINGS THAT I BELIEVE WILL INSPIRE YOU, BUT WE ARE IN A FIGHT, NOT ONLY FOR THE LIVES OF THESE CHILDREN, WHICH IS ENOUGH TO FIGHT FOR, BUT FOR THIS NATION. THIS NATION CANNOT CONTINUE TO PROSPER AND SUCCEED IF WE JUST CONTINUE TO KILL MILLIONS OF BABIES EVERY SINGLE YEAR. SO THIS WEEK, WE ARE DEVOTING THESE PROGRAMS TO JUST SHOWING YOU HOW THAT ABORTION IS SIN. IT'S WRONG. I'M NOT AGAINST PEOPLE WHO'VE HAD AN ABORTION. IT'S LIKE ANY OTHER SIN. YOU CAN BE FORGIVEN. GOD LOVES YOU. MANY OF YOU HAVE JUST DRANK THE KOOL-AID, AND I'M OUT OF TIME. I'VE GOT TO STOP, BUT I I ENCOURAGE YOU TO LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER. HE'S GOING TO GIVE YOU INFORMATION ABOUT HOW YOU CAN GET THIS PRODUCT AND MAKE SURE YOU LISTEN THE REST OF THE WEEK TO THE INTERVIEW WITH JANET PORTER. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortions. The majority in cases from Texas and Georgia said that the decision to end a pregnancy during the first three months belongs to the woman and her doctor, not the government. Children! Our heritage from the Lord. He knit me together in my mother's womb. Before he formed me, he knew me. Before I was born, he sanctified me. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men dictate equal, that they are endowed back with the something unalienable rights. That a man needs a life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Remember, it's my choice. It's our choice. It's a baby choice. It's God's choice. Not yours. Choose life. Amen. That's the baby? Wow. So that's really all going on right now. Yeah. It, it looks like an actual baby. Uh huh. I'D LIKE TO ENCOURAGE YOU TO GET THIS PRODUCT THAT WE'VE ENTITLED CHOOSE LIFE. AND IT'S INTERVIEWS WITH PEOPLE SUCH AS MELISSA ODIN. I INTERVIEWED HER IN 2015, ALSO 2020. SHE SURVIVED AN ABORTION, A SALINE ABORTION. 
and uh, she's testified in front of Congress. We've got Kristen Hawkins, uh, who is Students for Life, and I mean tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of students involved in the pro-life thing. She's been on our program. Marjorie Dannenfelser, who is the head of the Susan B. Anthony uh, list and one of the major lobbyists against abortion. Uh, Connie Weiskopf, who had multiple abortions herself, now runs a pregnancy center. Uh, Eileen Smith, whose daughter died during an abortion. Carrie Fisher, a woman who survived an abortion. And of course, this week we are having Janet Porter on. This woman is powerful. This will bless you. You need to get this. It will equip you, bless you, inspire you, motivate you to get involved in the pro-life movement. This week's interview with Janet Porter is available on a special Choose Life USB flash drive. Also included on this flash drive, you'll find many more interviews and testimonies relating to abortion. This Choose Life USB flash drive will be accompanied by the Observing All Things booklet that contains many statistics and scriptures with regard to abortion and other social issues. You can get these valuable resources for a gift of any amount when you contact us. Call our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, Monday through Friday, and from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. You know, social media has become a big thing in most people's lives, but sad to say, a lot of it is really negative. Well, we've got some positive social media. I would like to encourage you to check out our social media, all of these different platforms. We've got a lot of good news to share, so check it out, our social media for Andrew Womack Ministries. I tell you, I'm excited. God is gonna do something special during these meetings. I felt that he was just speaking truth. The perspective is so different, it's so new, and the, the understanding runs so deep. When you start speaking to your problem and commanding it to leave, that's when you start seeing great things happen. Andrew's teaching and the love that he has for God's Word and truth, it is the gospel truth. I'd like to ask you to pray about becoming a partner with us. You know, our ministry is based in the United States, but we have 16 offices around the world. We've got all together around 70 Bible schools scattered around the world. And we actually reach more people outside of the U.S. than we do in the U.S. And we need partners to enable us to do that. And so I'd like to encourage you to join with us. There are great benefits to you being a partner, not only in eternity, but here in this life. So if you are looking for a good return on your investment. I believe that this is a good ministry. It'll touch you right where you are. So join with us and become a partner with us today.